You said uh, the world is wondering what the heck is going on. Um, that, wasn't, that was a diplomatic term we said. <laughs> I'd say it's not only foreigners who are wondering that at the moment. Uh, and it raises a serious question about the ability of a democracy to pursue the kind of long-term sustained strategy that you're talking about. Uh, you know, it, I remember after 2001, people said, oh, well, we shouldn't have left Afghanistan when when the Soviet Union retreated. We're not going to make that mistake again. You've said uh, the United States made a mistake then by pulling out in 2011. But, you know, American, the polls all showed Americans were tired of war. Yep. And now uh, the people who seem to be getting traction are either the tired of war side or the let's carpet bomb till the desert glows. Uh, I mean, so talk a little bit about what yeah. what does this campaign tell us and how do you... How do you conduct a foreign policy like this in a democracy? Well, first of all, we need to, res that's why I think the first, the highest priority is to restore sustained economic growth. The disaffection that people feel is real. Uh, we have not made the, the transition to the 21st century, nor has many of the other countries of the developed world. And the strains you're seeing play out because people are deeply disaffected and they don't believe the institutions work for them. And so they, they don't necessarily default to the premise that America's leadership is a benefit to them. If you, if you created higher sustained economic growth where people's income was growing rather than in decline, I think you'd have a, uh, a, a greater acceptance of America's leadership in the, in, the, in the world. Look, if we don't, the consequences will play out just as they always had in history. This is, there's nothing new about this. Voids are filled. And they're filled now by extraordinary dangerous threats that uh, are different than they were, but they're, they're as bad or, or greater. And you also have the nation states that are opposed to us on the rise as well. So I think we have to make the case, and I think a majority of Republicans at least believe that the case is uh, that America's leadership in the world is a force for good. Uh, that's not to say everybody in our party agrees with that. And then there's the lack of seriousness, at least by the front-running candidate, that uh, I wouldn't know what his policies are, but when he doesn't know what the nuclear triad is, that's, that's cause for pause, I think. Uh, and his spokesman says, well, he doesn't need to know all the details about it because you just need to know he'll use it. <laughs> that's, that's not laughable. Uh, someone who proposes a 45% tariff across the board on China, it's not a serious proposal. It's basically the advocacy of a global depression. <laughs> that will wipe out the middle class in this country and see retaliation uh, that will, will create, will wreak havoc. Uh, I'm so, the only so, guy so confronting this. why is it gaining this. so much traction? I'm, I'm the only guy confronting this because people are, are anxious about their future. They've latched on to the, to the large personality on the stage, but the reality is that he's not a serious candidate. And he'll get wiped out in the general election. This is not a political gathering, so we can move on. But the simple fact is that we have to restore a traditional role in foreign policy. And you can't do this by, you know, be rambling around by saying Putin can take care of ISIS. China can take care of North Korea. It's their problem. And the same, literally in a 24-hour news cycle, propose a 45% tariff on the country that you're saying it's your responsibility to take care of, of uh, North Korea. There, there needs to be candidates that stand up and say there's a better path than the path of the left, which is a path of retrenchment, and the path you know, emerging part of the right that is, that is viewing this where we don't have a, uh, a security interest in areas where we do. I think we have to recognize that these threats are real, that they have a huge impact on millions of people in our country, and that the first objective of the President of the United States needs to be to keep us safe. And you can't keep us safe by talking trash without backing it up with serious plans. Let me uh, ask you, you've, you've said